right, so here we are. Ah, he's spitting rocks at me. Ooh, boy, that was a harder hit than I anticipated. Fields milkshake for breakfast. That's pretty robust back in there. Freaking smells like IPAs out here. Well, I just got myself into a little bit of a pickle and then back out of it again, but I just used up a ton of energy. Are we going down there? Mother God, dead end on the side of a hill. Ben and I just spent probably 25 minutes getting my bike spun around. I am literally in survival mode right now. I am gassed. I just want to get the off of this route right now and get camping. Welcome to the series for the Oregon BDR with Explore Adventure Moto and Dork in the Road and AKA Timmers. After months of anticipation and literal years of waiting for this route to exist, we are starting the Oregon BDR today. Reserved a, a cabin and a teepee last night at Crane Springs so we wouldn't have to ride down here from the Portland area and then start the route the same day. Beautiful morning nice and quiet it's, this place is a lot different when giant loop ride isn't happening it's a lot different i've never been here unless i've been at the giant loop event it's a nice peaceful morning before the chaos begins we're going to pack up while we're waiting for the cafe to open so we can get our coffee and our breakfast burrito before we hit the road and we're going to start in fields we're not going to go all the way down to denio or denio fields milkshake for breakfast and start in Nevada. Um, Fields is the alternate start point, the official alternate start point. And we're gonna start there because from Denio Junction to Fields, it's basically just 30 miles of just pavement. Tim and I did plenty of pavement on the bikes yesterday. So we're starting in Fields. We haven't technically even started yet today and the first injury has already happened. And I don't, I don't know if Tim's gonna make it. He's, he's pretty hurt. I have a boo-boo. Gotta zoom way, casualty. way in for that. I mean, I even got the first aid kit out. You think I'm kidding, but I actually did. It didn't help. Here we are, folks. This is our start. Ah, he's spitting rocks at me. A little dusty. The wind is doing a relatively good job of keeping it out. I'm still gonna hang back a little bit because he's, he's picking up rocks and spitting them at me. My goal for this trip is not to go fast and get it done super quick and look cool and all that stuff. I don't care about all that. My goal is to finish the Oregon BDR. So there are going to be times when I'm going to be riding quite a bit slower than the other guys because they are faster riders than me. So that's just, that's just how I'm going to do it. Ooh, boy, that was a harder hit than I anticipated. Jeez. That was a lot deeper than I anticipated. A little rocky, nothing too bad so far. Got uh, erosion ruts, and some of them are most definitely wheel grabbers, so watch out for that when you're doing this. Other than that, it's just worn in ruts that kind of give you a little bit of a berm around the corners while you're snaking your way through this uh, sagebrush land. Up, up, up. There's a good reason why we do this. And this is how a lot of this, this section of the route is gonna look. Just endless road winding off into the sagebrush, as far as the eye can see. This is not that dusty, see? This road just keeps going and going. It's just like the pavement roads out here, endlessly straight. Every once in a while you get these repaired sections of road, it makes you think there's sand, but it's not. It's still hard packed dirt. But I'm gonna stand up just in case. I'm taking no chances. If we keep doing this kind of pace, we'll, we'll have great fuel mileage. Shouldn't be an issue with anybody, I don't think. 
possibly been, but we have, I mean, we have two two-gallon gas bags with us, so, armadillo bags, sorry. Here we are at Box Canyon Reservoir. That's kind of cool. Smells like cows. Really, really dry. Starting to run into a little bit more texture now. So far it's been a pretty easy cruise. A couple of soft spots, nothing major. Then you come into a little rocky section for a little bit and then it's over. Then another rocky section like this and then it's over. Back into the smooth. Gives you time to sit down, rest your arms, get ready for the next chunky section. Be prepared when you come out here to do this. One, do not make this your first BDR that you've ever done. Because according to the corporation, I mean the organization, uh, this is one of the top three hardest routes that they've put out, out of the 12. So don't make this your first one, please. But it, when, when you do ride it, make sure you are self-sufficient because particularly on this first section, you are remote. There is nothing out here except for maybe other motorcyclists that are on this route also. Make sure you got your first aid. Make sure you carry plenty of water. Uh, now we're getting into a little bit of silt. It's not bad, it's doable. It's not terrifying silt like Mojave is. Just make sure you're prepared and you're self-sufficient. Even if you're riding with a group, try to be self-sufficient and have your own recovery gear, your own first aid kit, and most definitely water. I can't stress that enough, bring enough water. Some really pretty wildflowers out here blooming. Definitely it's time to stop for water. That's pretty robust back in there. Well, yeah, you're dodging rocks and then you hit sand. Yeah. <laughs> the sand hasn't been anywhere near what they said it was gonna be though. No. That's nothing. No, I can handle that. Yeah. All right, we're down out of the rocky pass back into the grassland here. Grassland and sagebrush. Little, little patches of rocks. Plenty of silt, not a whole lot of sand. This is actually silt from what I've seen so far. It's pretty hardcore grass too. I can actually feel it hitting my boot as I ride past it. Still, let's see, what is it, 93 degrees out here? Yep. Something else you should be prepared for when you ride a BDR, if you've never done it, is uh, be prepared for all types of weather. Because you do it in the summertime and some of it's in the desert, particularly in the western states, like such as this one or Washington gets really hot well then you're gonna climb elevation and go up into the mountains and at night it gets really cold so just bring layers that's why I went uh, I went different than my actual riding jacket this time I'm just doing layers jersey hoodie you know I've got a thermal shirt that that I can put on if it if some crazy how we find really cold temperatures I don't foresee that happening this is one area out here you do not want to get a flat tire. Even if you have the means to fix it, which I do, if you get a flat, you're, you're going to spend half an hour to an hour to fix it. And in 90 to 93 degree temperatures, oof, no thanks. No shade. There is zero shade out here. Unless you go up right next to one of them cliffs. Smells like IPAs out here. Yeah, very junipery. Well, I just got myself into a little bit of a pickle and then back out of it again, but I just used up a ton of energy. So I am in no shape or mindset to be doing Beatty's Butte for sure. I understand it's a uh, one heck of a good view, but I do not have the energy. I think I pulled a muscle in my leg too, so that's great. That's super fun. Looking back now in hindsight, this is where the issues of my day started. What I was recognizing as a pulled muscle was actually the beginning of uh, severe muscle cramps that just got worse and worse throughout this day. 
I got stuck on that hill. I had to dig myself out. I'm gas now. There's no way I'm doing baities. Why didn't you signal us? Like, I was like, oh, when I had my helmet off, I was fixing my camera. It was frozen. What had happened was I had stopped to fix a frozen camera because I was missing a great section. And I didn't even realize that I was stuck until I had already waved them off. Therefore, I had to dig myself out. No fault of these guys at all. And here is where the dry throat issues start, which I at the time mistook for dust. And that is one of the horrible issues of heat exhaustion and more subsequently heat stroke. Making dust in my throat. Is poor decision making and missing cues that you would otherwise easily recognize. Going down there. Are we going down there? Mother God damn it. God damn it, man. And another symptom of heat exhaustion and heat stroke that I did not realize in the moment is agitation and short yeah. temper. All right, we're back on the road again. I am gassed. I am tired and I got mighty frustrated as well. This Garmin XT is really screwing me today. That and I'm paying attention to the track and uh, like where I'm going because there's some pretty robust stuff out here. We finally did find some chunk and some texture and I'm missing cues on my Garmin screen but this last time it had me go down a frickin' what turned out to be a single track cow trail dead end on the side of a hill. Ben and I just spent probably 25 minutes getting my bike spun around. And I am, when then that was the second time that something like that had happened today, I had to dig myself out earlier I am into the frustration level today, so I will be riding slower with a lot more purpose because I don't want my frustration to lead to a far worse mistake. Ooh, water crossing. Cool. Update. If I am literally in survival mode right now, I am gassed. I just want to get the f off of this route right now and get camping. I am completely gassed. I had to I had to take like an hour break, take electrolytes. I mean, I was tunnel vision out and yeah, not good. F section 1. Screw that. I can't wait to never ride this again. <laughs> it's it's plenty it, it's it's fun. It would be fun on a much smaller bike, but anybody that rides this on a big bike's a masochist. No thank you. I will not do section one again. Still trying to wind our way out of here. We had to take bypasses because the antelope refuge, there's shiny new gates and locks keeping everybody out. So if you ride this, keep in mind to take the snow bypass and don't waste your time. Like we wasted like two hours trying to see if we could get through. So, and now we're still out here. It's quarter to five. This is not my idea of fun at all thank god that's not pavement but it looks a hell of a lot more maintained well done sometimes you just gotta go in the right direction yeah we gotta go left right correct yeah it's just on, on those rocks man i'm how you doing you're doing all right well there's no sense of going into flood because everything's closed or will be Right. So campground makes the most sense. Campground it is. About 20 miles from Plush. Everything's going to be closed by the time we get there. We're just looking for a campground at this point. How, how's he doing? This was another group of two riders that we had run into while we were out there. And one of their guys was also having severe heat, uh, heat issues. So um, we were they were kind of... We were all kind of tagging along together because strength in numbers, right? Uh, if something's going to go wrong, you want more people there, not less. So we were all kind of riding the same ride at this point and all trying to get to the same campground. This is pretty neat in here, actually. Let's crash somebody's party. Well, why don't you guys grab one of those and I'll just go down the road and just see if there's anything else. Okay, yeah, and if you find something better, come back. So he's going up that way, right? 
I'm going to go back to the other side and see if that gate's actually locked. You want to wait here in the shade? Yeah. If I could describe this campground, the Hot Springs campground with one word, mosquitoes. Don't, don't even bother bringing hot, uh, bug spray. Just don't come to this campground. It's awful. Start of day two. I'm not feeling so great. Yeah, the mosquitoes are no joke around this place. This is just, there's no comfort to be had here. You can't sit still for even one minute. Oh, Tim's up. Just, oh, the bugs. Man, I don't know if they had a, a super hatch this year or, or what they did, but don't come to the Hot Springs campground in early July. I'm telling you, it's not fun, not comfortable. I put some of that stuff on and it's not working. It doesn't do It makes me feel like I'm doing something. I'm still not feeling really great this morning. So reassess after we get on the bikes and see how things go. Definitely not feeling 100% today at all. I'm feeling, I'd, I'd be lucky if I was feeling 50% right now, not doing great. So it doesn't help that I'm frustrated with all these mosquitoes and stuff around me, but I'm just gassed. I, sp I spend maybe just a couple of minutes in the sun packing the bike and I gotta take five, 10 minutes in the shade. Just definitely overdid it yesterday. I'm not real happy with myself for that. That's, I know better than that. We're gonna make our way into plush. Hopefully their, their gas pumps are working. We got reports that they weren't working yesterday. So um, if, they, if they're working, great. I am going to refill all of my water, take one of my liquid IVs, get a little something to eat. And if they're not working, I'm gonna refill all my water, get a little something to eat, and then we're gonna to go to Adele, which is the next closest gas, another 20 miles. Ben should make it, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And then uh, see how I'm feeling then, see how I do on the road. Uh, this next section has a lot of long, rocky, like very rocky sections, so if I have to bypass and meet these guys in Christmas Valley, that's what I'll do. I'm not gonna take any chances today though. I think my stomach is the thing that's bothering me the most. Heat exhaustion is a real thing, kids. Here we are in plush. Hopefully they have gas. Looks like they don't. That sucks. How far is Adele? 20. How much do you think you have? Well, why, why can't we go to Adele? No gas. No. You're you, me. Uh-uh. You said Lakeview is the nearest gas. How far away is Lakeview? 40 miles. So I can make it. So what has happened is that the pumps at Plush are not working. So we're trying to figure out where we can get fuel now. Adele was the next closest, but they were out of gas. So now we're going to have That's to it. route to Lakeview, which is just out of Ben's bike's range. We do have the gas bags still, though. So an adventure bike ride rarely goes as planned. Oh, Even my gas light came on on the way here. Lakeview, Lakeview it is. I've made the decision to split off from these guys and meet them in Christmas Valley. I do not have it in me to uh, ride off-road today. I just don't. I have zero energy, even after breakfast. So, meet them in Christmas Valley at one of the restaurants there, and then we'll decide if we're gonna camp or grab a motel so we can be in AC. Because I gotta, I gotta get my, my shit under control. Not doing great. My head isn't in the game today. Not the way I wanted the Oregon BDR to turn out, but I'm erring on the side of caution because I barely have energy to ride on the road right now and that's not ideal situation either. But I can't stay here, so. But I for damn sure don't have the energy to be riding in 
some of the rockiest stuff on the route in section two. That's for damn sure. Ride careful today. Road update. Today is my last day of the Oregon BDR trip. It's it would be day three. Um, day one on, on section one pushed myself too far, way past my reserves, and kind of screwed myself up a little bit. Heat exhaustion and whatnot. And I've recovered from that, but I have some lasting effects either from that or an unrelated issue that I don't know what it is. So I am going to split from the group and head home and um, get seen by some medical professionals, try to figure out what's going on. Uh, it's it's not something that I just want to push through that would not be safe. So uh, Ben and Tim will continue on and finish the route and I will try to get back out later when I get healthy and do the sections that are up close to my house. But I will definitely not do section one again <laughs> or come down and do section two, it's too rocky for me. It's just beyond my fun level. Talk soon. It is now several weeks later after the trip. It took me uh, the day I got home. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get literally right in to see my doctor within an hour of getting home. So I got home, I didn't even shower, just got out of my riding gear and I went to the doctor. Um, and he diagnosed me with severe heat stroke. It was not heat exhaustion. One of the things that can happen with that it, and as he explained it to me, it is one of the more rare um, symptoms that can happen. But if you get severe heat stroke, your internal organs can begin to shut down. They can try to shut down. Um, when your internal organs get shocked, such as mine did, um, they begin to bleed, which is where the bleeding came from. Um, and that persisted for about three days after I got home. So um, I am now fully recovered from all of the symptoms. Uh, two things that will affect me for the rest of my life, according to my doctor, is I will now forever be more susceptible to heat, so I need to be careful with that, and I forever will uh, be at a much higher risk to get heat stroke again. So what does that mean for future rides? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep riding the way I always have. I'm just going to approach it differently. I'm not always going to go after the, the super hardcore rides. S small sections of hard, totally fine. Riding rocks, small technical sections of rocks is still my favorite thing to do. Miles and miles on end, though, no f thank you. That is, that is not my idea of fun. Um, what does that mean for me riding the Oregon BDR? As far as the entire route end to end, I will not ride it. That is above my fun level. Other people have at it, no problem. If you can do it, that's awesome. If you like doing that type of riding, that is awesome. On a big bike, I consider that hard enduro, and that is not for me at all. I'll, I'm going to try and ride the Idaho BDR next year, but. And I'll ride sections of the Oregon BDR, probably section five and six, maybe, maybe six, maybe not five, depends on what the sand is like, because I don't like sand anyway. As far as the, sec the route end to end, I will not ride it. This is uh, the end of my <laughs> Oregon BDR saga. Um, I've taken a while to put this video out because, to be completely honest, I'm extremely embarrassed and ashamed. Not because of the gross things that happened to me while I was out there. But because I, I have been certified, trained, first aid, medical, to a pretty high level off and on throughout my entire life. And I did not recognize the signs and take care of myself. I just kept pushing. So that's embarrassing for me. I don't want comments giving me pointers or tips um, please don't do that 
if a bunch of that stuff starts happening, I'm turning the comment section off. I know what I did wrong. And I know how to combat it in the future. Trust me, I have spent the last three weeks researching what the signs and symptoms are, refreshing my memory, and more importantly, not how to combat the symptoms, but how to avoid them altogether in the future. As you watch this video, I hope that you took pointers and you learned something from my mistakes. This has been an Explore Adventure Moto production. Stay hairy.